in the election. And the key to the lock in Pennsylvania is northeastern Pennsylvania, which is one of the reasons why we are honored to have the president of the United States, President Donald Trump, with us. Mr. President, thank you for joining us. It's an honor, sir. Well, thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Well, you were here in northeastern Pennsylvania yesterday. You had a huge right. crowd, and you, you hit a lot, of, a lot of important points. But I think one of the things that people really, really relate to here is the need to bring jobs back to northeastern Pennsylvania. Right. That's right. And the country. We were doing record business like never before, and we got hit with the plague, and now they're coming back. You see the job numbers are going up very rapidly. And believe it or not, it sounds uh, a little strange to say, but when, you know, we hit 7.8%, as bad as that is, people were projecting 42%, which is, you know, catastrophic. And we're down now, and we're going to have it down to where we were pretty soon. Uh, we're doing a very strong, you saw the 33.1% GDP, which was a record by more than double. So we'll get it back. But, you know, we got hit by the plague from China. They, they, uh, they could have kept it out, in my opinion, and they didn't. They didn't keep it out from the world, not only us, but uh, we're we're doing very well. We're doing very well. Mr. It's President, I, thing that I don't know if you heard my story, but about 20 years ago, I heard you speak at a business conference in New York, and you said, right? I'm, I'm building hotels, and you know, I can't buy a television made in the United States. And at the same time, <laughs> the RCA plant here in Dunmore was closing, and the jobs were going to Mexico. I always remember right. that, and it took a long time to undo NAFTA, didn't it, sir? Well, it did, and it wasn't easy, and you have a lot of people in Congress uh, that didn't want to do it, and you can imagine why, and it was probably the number one we talk about. I remember that story and very well, and uh, you, you don't make a television set here anymore. We used to make all of them, right? And um, now they're starting. You know, we're bringing a lot of that back, but it's very interesting, Frank, uh, and very sad. It's probably the reason that I'm your president, because, you know, I, I saw what was happening on trade. I saw our companies leaving our country country and going to Mexico and by the way Canada too and I saw our jobs going to China you know China was sending so much stuff in and it was crazy and it's probably the reason that more than anything else that I ran for president well, you know, we've had a big impact Mr. President you created a lot of jobs here in northeastern Pennsylvania and your tax, right. your tax cut helped a lot of people but there is right. something sir that has been, been challenging jobs and it has been hurting people in the pocketbook and I know that every time you came here, you saw the banners that said end the rain tax. Now, now, sir, the rain tax was created by an Obama Biden. And I think you can lock up about 90,000 votes in Luzerne County just by confirming that you know about the issue and that you will, sir, do whatever you can do to you, help us. Do you, know, do you know I've instructed them to end that tax and we're seeing if we can do it with an executive order? I think it's ridiculous and it's it just pertains to a certain part. I've already instructed them to end that. And it's not because of this phone call either because I didn't even know you we're going to frankly bring that up but I've instructed I think it's one of the most ridiculous and unfair taxes uh, it's going it is going and I'm almost surprised they haven't started uh, they have started the process and I think I can do it very quickly actually so uh, the answer is we're going to do it it pertains to that area and it's so unfair and it was done by Obama Biden you know the Biden can you believe this guy so and we're doing by the way I don't know if you see what's happening but we're doing very well we're doing very well Florida Ohio, Texas, looks like we're winning a lot of different places, so that's good. No, we are getting rid of that. Uh, it's, it's going to be done. It's well, going to be done, and quickly. You know, we had a, a businessman that was on the air with us one time. He was a machine shop, and he got a $14,000 rain tax bill and said he could not give his workers a raise or continue the profit sharing. And I, I thought, that is not your America, Mr. President. Well, you watch, uh, because it was, I ordered them to get this done a month ago, two months ago, and it's going to get done, and it's going to get done fast. You can watch it. It's done. It is so ridiculous. You know, I heard about it for the first time. I, you spoke to me about it. I heard about it indirectly, and it was sort of a strange thing. I, I kept hearing about it indirectly, and I said, I can't believe this tax. It's the craziest tax. Anyway, it's being done, Frank. I can tell you that. Well, one of our great fighters has been Congressman Dan.
Dan Muser. We have been we have been oh, attached to everybody that that knew you from your your family to all of your advisors. We have brought this subject up, and Dan has fought for us. Now, Mr. President, you also talked about something else that is really important to us, and that is law enforcement. We do an entire law enforcement appreciation day program here. Right. And I, I appreciate you standing for law enforcement, sir. Well, they do. First of all, they stand for me, too. I think I have 100 percent of the everybody from law enforcement's endorsed me. And I don't think Biden has anybody with what they're doing, with what they're, you know, with the way they're doing. And um, look, they're great people and they're totally uh, I think they're mistreated. It's such a dangerous job. They are so respected and loved. And I can tell you they're respected and loved by me. We've done a lot. You know, we gave all of the excess uh, military equipment to the law enforcement over the last two years. It was sitting in warehouses, hundreds of millions of dollars that Obama didn't want to give. He didn't want to give it. He thought it made them look too militaristic. And I gave it out. And a lot of it was really safety equipment more than anything else. You know that. And uh, we gave it out. But we have had a great relationship with law enforcement. And by the way, we have to let them do their job. We do indeed. And, and a, an issue that's very important to me, and I do want to personally thank you for protecting the unborn. It is a very important issue here yeah. and religious freedom. You know, Mr. President, right. they told me I only had a few minutes with you and I've taken extra time. But what's your prediction? Don't worry about for it. What's your prediction for tonight, sir? I think we win big. I think we win uh, Florida. I think we're going to win Pennsylvania. How are we doing in Pennsylvania? Let me ask you. Let me turn the table. How are we doing? Because I'm hearing we're having long, beautiful lines of people in our areas that can't, people can't even believe what's going on. Well, what would you say in Pennsylvania? I, I would say based on my callers and based on the input I'm getting, I would use the word landslide. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, I'm hearing that. I don't want to say that, but I'm hearing landslide. I'm hearing North North Carolina, a virtual landslide. Florida, I'm hearing landslide. I hear, I'm hearing Florida. You know, a hundred and something million dollars was spent against me on attack ads, and I'm hearing landslide. But big numbers in Texas, tremendous in Texas. It's going to be a... Uh, uh, let's put it this way. I hope you enjoy the evening as much as I do. I think it's going to be great. I really do. I, I think it's going to be great. Mr. President, an honor to talk to you. Stay healthy, sir, and thank well, you for talking with us. Well, you tell, <laughs> tell your people on the rain tax, I'm absolutely working on it. In fact, you call Dan and tell him to call me, okay? And Dan is great. He's a great congressman. He loves your area. He loves you all. He loves our country. So you tell Dan to give me a call, okay? We'll take care of it. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Have a good time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. My pleasure. <laughs> Okay, uh, I I wasn't. Uh, you know, wow, eight eight three zero zero nine eight. Somebody call me. Give me oh, your reaction God, to that. that. Especially Mike from the Back Mountain. Please call me. That is incredible. That is incredible. Well, you heard it. Now, if there's one thing that I can say about this president that I can't really say about any politician that I've you know paid attention to before, is that when this president says that he's going to do something. You can count on the fact that he's going to come hell or high water, which is, you know, why he's not liked so much, because he's not taking no for an answer. He's cutting through the red tape. Um, I think that's what's really shaken up things in Washington is the fact that he doesn't wait. He says it needs to be done. He sees it needs to be done and he does it. And we all know what bureaucracy and red tape means. It means, you, you know, somebody can make you a promise and years and years go by and they say, oh, the paperwork's put in, it's on the list, it's on the docket, blah, blah, blah. Our president doesn't wait. He sees something that needs to be corrected and he does it immediately. Now, one thing for the future, when he does get reelected, and I really think he's going to, is I think we need to take a look at our internet laws. Okay, we need to very much take a new stance on and very much take a hard look at this because there are no um, really rules that govern AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, we need to have some laws in place because this is a new frontier that nobody is thinking about what's going to happen in the long run. So we need to put some firm control issues, some controls on AI, some um, things that, that are not to be surpassed ever, like ever 
uh, like we need to have safeguards and checks that will pr um, provide us with some certainty that these um, AI will not go rogue and um, become autonomous and make decisions on their own. We need to have a safeguard and an accountability and a check system that makes sure that AI does not have programming that will allow it to run on its own because that is the biggest fear. And I know, you know, we got the Red Queen and as far as I'm concerned, an EMP would be the best thing that could happen in our world. Yes, I know people would go ape shit, but everybody really wouldn't die. All right, I'm... <laughs> if, you know, if I, if I could say one thing would be great, you know, Whenever you watch Star Trek and they go to a new world, you see all the people are dressed in the same kind of clothes. You know, they're wearing kind of a cotton robes or some sort of outfit and it's all the same. Well, you know, we're going crazy with these fabrics, okay, for one thing. This is a big strain on our planet. We're producing all these really soft fabrics that I love. I mean, I love the soft blankets. I love the cushiony socks. But you know what? We're wasting resources on doing such a variety. You know, we get to one cloth, make that one cloth, everybody wears it, that's it, okay? That's a small, you know, it's one solution. You know, but like, I don't know, I'd prefer silk. <laughs> okay, let's let's make some synthetic silk and that'd be the only thing that we're allowed to wear in the world. All right, something like that. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about again, darn it. Oh, anyway, I was talking about making the world better and I had a point before my, I, I saw a squirrel, so to speak. Um, one thing that you learned about me when, when I start talking live, um, I'm always going to stop and say, what was I talking about? And if you can't tell me what, what I was talking about, we're going to be here forever because I will ultimately always forget. Anyway, um, the president promising to end the rain tax. The rain tax was very unfair. Um, I lost my house when I was uh, like 20 years old. Um, and part of the reason was um, a crazy sewer bill. I had liens against this house that I could not hope to pay. I was, I had, you know, two babies and I was on my own and we had to basically pay to flush our toilet. The sanitary authority tax was $249 or something like that. Um, or 149 quarterly, and I was barely, I barely had enough to, like, uh, you know, to pay anything. I, I didn't have enough to pay anything. And that bill is what made me lose my home so many years ago. And now they instituted um, a rain tax, and it made it even worse. And this rain tax was meant to pay for, um, like, the tourist industry, industry in the Chesapeake Bay, to clean up the water so that they have the sporting, the boating, all that fishing. And, you know, they did not realize that for one person, that could mean the, fa the, the fact that they'd be secure their entire life or they wouldn't. You know, my, I was left at home. I was willed to me. And it was intended so that I would have a forever place to live. And because I lost that home, my kids never had any security. I never had any security. And we don't realize how much, like just, just an amount like that, like $200 could make to a person's life. So I lost my home, and a lot of people were not able to pay that here, especially the elderly on their property taxes. I, I mean, you know, you don't pay these monies, and they put a lien on your home, and, and then eventually they just take it away from you. And that is, like, just, the, you know, it ruined my life. Oh, God, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's just bringing up so much emotion right now. You know, that one thing could have changed my entire life and the lives of all of my children. It would have made so much of a difference in my life. It was just the most terrific thing that, you know, these people were losing their homes here because they couldn't pay that extra money on that sewer bill. And the president has promised to end that. And uh, I, I, you know, I hope he wins tonight, and I hope he's able to do that because oh, I'm really emotional right now. I mean, this is, uh, you know, I never really, I didn't really connect the two. But, yeah, that's why I lost my home so many years ago. I mean, there are other reasons, but, you know, that was the lien that they kept placing on my property. So uh, I think somebody's at my door. Um, anyway, thank you for promising to end that tax, and I hope you um, get elected and are able to do that and save someone's home. 
and their life. It's just I'm trying to illustrate to you what it means to so many people and how much that could change somebody's life. It would have changed my whole life. It makes me angry and sad to think that something like that could have changed my life so many years ago. All right, that's it. Thanks.